Good morning from Mount Sinai. Uh, lovely morning. Actually, the uh, heat wave going down. I think the heat wave going down in India also with the monsoon. And uh, welcome from Mount Sinai Cash Lab for this our live case from Mount Sinai with Sun Pharma and uh, giving this opportunity. And we continue to show uh, always uh, some interesting cases. And this one is today will be equally uh, challenging because of some decision making what to do. Uh, although it's, it's, uh, it's a left main case. And of course, uh, my co-moderator here, co-presenter, uh, Dr. Keeney on my left side, and then we have our fellow the, here uh, with the Gotham and uh, the new fellows have started. Rest of the- uh, Richard. Richard and rest of the team member, probably the same uh, that continues. Uh, that's a good sign that your retention of your staff, that speaks for the organization. So with that note, and I'll really thank uh, Dr. VT Shah to be uh, to volunteer this uh, on a very quick note to moderate our today's presentation. So with that note, we start here, and of course, uh, Dr. VT Shah asks uh, the same, uh, no conflict of interest. Of course, Dr. VT Shah is a very senior international cardiologist, and have my relationship with him for 35 plus years, and very expert um, in performing. Uh, state-of-the-art intervention using quite a bit of imaging and has done a uh, lot of publications and of the trials and thought leader uh, in field of interventional cardiology. So we really uh, thank Dr. V.T. Shah and he actually is the CCA International. He's a co-founder which does various uh, meetings, international meetings, which is a great uh, tool. So what we'll do is after presentation, we'll have some case discussion uh, and uh, the presentation of uh, a live in box case, uh, which I'll show. So let's go to the case number 21 of the Sun Pharma. Our series is a 64 year old patient who presented with new onset mild angina, but CTA showing left main and RCA. Remember the old data I've shown that once you have left main disease, you need to go for angiogram because even in the, the ischemia trial, the patients, uh, the alone stress test and this are not predictive. You need to go uh, CTA and then follow the angiogram is the real final answer. Even if the patients are asymptomatic and I'll show you the rate, latest guidelines still remain the same. Even asymptomatic patient, once you find left main, you need to intervene in a viable patient with a revascularization, surgical or PCI that is a part of discussion. This patient did not have any history beforehand, did have a CVA and other factors there. It was diabetes, but just uh, uh, diet control, so truly not diabetic. Mild symptoms, SAQ score of 93 to 100 is good. Zero is very symptomatic, so in between. And on good medical therapy, as you see here, uh, multiple medical therapy has been done fine. And uh, patient had a cath about last month, which revealed left main bifurcation, which we are going to show you uh, now. Uh, and we want to show that. And right coronary actually was a moderate diffuse, although CTA did show disease, but we didn't find much in terms of focal stenosis. You can see LV is good. So normal LV function, right coronary artery is a moderate disease, I would say about 30, 50 proximal, mid again about 50% also, so diffuse. And then this is we have Left yeah, this could be, let's go back to that. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree, uh, VT, uh, you think that this one, if we do FFR, I'm, I likely it will be positive, right? Because CTA, what happened is they could not do the CT FFR. Most of the time we do at Sinai when they have moderate disease, they do a CT FFR, but this patient CT was done outside. So we don't have the CT FFR, but I think if we do invasive FFR, this could be positive in this large right coronary artery. What is your opinion? Especially, especially because it's a long diffuse disease. Yeah. You may have 40 to 50 percent, but if the length is more than 20 millimeter, then the chances of being positive are quite high. Plus, also it will depend upon the plaque morphology, which of course I don't know whether the CT fellow gave you some morphological features or not, of whether it was more of unstable or stable plaque. Yeah, no, they did say the mixed plaque. Uh, both uh, lipid and uh, calcified. Uh, same thing on the left side, but there was not a heavy calcium. Told calcium score was 600, but it's still high, more than 400 is considered as a significant. So it was yeah. 608 uh, calcium, as yeah. you can see here, this is the left main. Yeah, so calcium mostly, I think is adventitial. Um, so you have significant distal left main. Um, I would say again, narrowing down to 60. And same thing is extending into the 
prox to medial AD and as well as circumflex. So circumflex, if you see here, about 50% uh, osteal disease and same with the LAD. So it will be before. Right. Uh, if, so uh, yeah. One more angiographic feature which this patient has is the tortuosity. You see on the right side also, and you see the circumflex also, whereas in the mid LAD also, there is a quite a bit of tortures. So right side Absolutely. FFR sometimes could be difficult if there is concertina. Yeah, that's correct. Absolutely. And and many times the wiring is difficult. So I tell uh, yeah. our fellows that do a body wire. Uh, so this is the left main. Now, question is some people may say that, you know what, it doesn't look significant and maybe, we, and that's why we are going to do imaging to exactly tell us. We decided this one to do with the OCT and uh, that will tell us involvement of the osteal circ and the LED and more importantly, significant of the left main lesion. In this view, definitely it looks uh, 70 plus percent as you can see, uh, 60, 70, but uh, we'll do a functional testing. So with that note, while we are getting the guide catheter um, insertion now, we go back to our slide presentation. So we complete that. Um, go to the slides, please. Yeah, so this is our plan now today. OCT guided PCI of the distal left main bifurcation. And the idea was because we thought that disease was just into the LED, but here in some extra views looks like maybe a little bit circ, but we'll figure that out. But if there's no disease of the circumflex, we'll just do a distal uh, left main to LED single stent crossover technique. But yes, if both are involved, then we'll do a, a two stent strategy, which we always do a mini crush. So this is basically we know now when you uh, discuss these patients uh, with the complex CAD like this left main, you have to have a one hard team discussion. This is the case actually was sent for hard team after the angiogram. Then you have to calculate their STS risk and syntax risk score. And then of course the frailty which is have come up now because we, which are not part of our usual that. exam uh, and right. score calculation because many times patients are too frail, too weak. We cannot put a STS or syntax score on that. So this particular case is otherwise good. Syntax score is 22 and STS score is one. Anything more than four STS is bad. Then also there are clear guidelines for physiology to guide revascularization that FFR and uh, that basically FFR and IFR, but also they say that if uh, the, you know, if you have a sign non-significant lesion should not get PCI. Then imaging, the more so for IVAS. There are some data on the OCT also, but more so for post. The pre basically is that I see IVAS can be done to define the lesion severity. And that basically they define in three millimeter vessel, the lumen cross-sectional area of four millimeter square, I mean MLA. And uh, if it's the non-left main, it, they left to a 5.5 or six. Uh, the criteria usually six uh, based on our uh, Excel trial. So this patient, if we put into the OCT criteria, of the left main CAD, it is a low risk finding. Uh, intermediate, I mean, the patient is a low syntax score and intermediate uh, risk non-vigive finding or could be, you can say low risk. We did we had a, a high, syntax, high calcium score. Anything calcium more than 400 uh, is considered as a high risk by the OCT criteria. So it's appropriate from interventional point of view. The second point comes down to that how to deal with this patient left main as I said, that is symptomatic or no symptomatic. Uh, left main is the category where they have put it into that patients with the, if they are suitable candidate, they go for cabbage and non-suitable candidate can go for PCI. And PCI has become now 2A uh, for those uh, patients. Then of course, if you have, uh, and for the multivessel, they have brought back in the latest guideline, LV dysfunction. So only real class one benefit of cabbage is patients who have multivessel disease and suitable for cabbage and EF is less than 35%. And uh, the PCI actually comes quite uh, alternate to that uh, in a 2A, 2B category, uh, patients with the particularly with the ejection fraction more than 50%. So these are the uh, guidelines. Uh, of course, issue comes down to once you work on left main, do you use assist device? And we have our graph already shows uh, that basically patient with the low EF, uh, 20 to 40, this patient has a normal ejection fraction. Uh, so that th those cases uh, with a complex CAD, uh, not a simple, but complex, 
uh, impella is uh, useful and along with the, the balloon pump if your impella is contraindicated and most common contraindication is that patient has a bad PAD where you need at least a five millimeter size of the iliac artery for impella because of vascular complication. Whether impella will be beneficial on long term, there is a trial ongoing called PROTECT4 and uh, we are part of it uh, and those are the patient EF has to be less than 40 and complex CAD. They are being randomized to Impala versus C Impala CP versus routine care. Means you can use a balloon pump or you don't use balloon pump. And the idea is then follow up uh, the target vessel failure. So this is the long term follow up data of uh, one to two years in that Impala uh, in the Protect 4 trial. With that note, uh, we can go back to our presentation uh, with the Floro. Uh, Dr. Keeney has already wired it. Which wire you are using? And OCT is going in now. Any questions so far? Anybody you can put the... And we can ask chat. our yeah. audience uh, the, 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 on the done. questions on the chat box. This is the OCT oh, oh. ready. Connect here quickly. You yeah. can use it. No, 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 no. So remember, you need a little high flow injection. So uh, you need an automatic uh, uh, device. How you use... Uh, VT, how are you using the... Uh, power injector for the OCT in your lab there? No, by and large, it is manual with us. Manual, yeah, okay. Manual, the yeah, pressure of our pump. Yeah. yeah. Okay, show it on the screen. Yeah, they did. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, okay, so we, sorry. we can see, yeah, on the monitor. Right. No, okay, okay, sorry, can you try it again, please? Hmm? What happened, didn't work? No, okay, am I going to VFib? There's no distal. Okay, tell us what we are, why this did not show up. Okay, get it so, ready again. Yeah. Go live view. Hmm. It's uh, in the guide catheter? No, no, it's in the guide. Sure, sorry, stop. Switch it on. It's live view. Okay, ready? Okay, we are repeating it again. Yeah. Leave it, leave it down. Okay, calculating. Mm. Yeah, good clearance. So it's ready. Mm. Yeah, good image. We got it. I'll not do the yeah. circ. No, no need to circ, yeah. So I'm All right, let's see. We evaluate this. And more important, two things, because calcium was no, there. No, other thing is, remember, we knew, yeah. like Dr. Shah mentioned, it's torturous. And if you see, there's no flow in the distal LED. That was, I was a little concerned doing yeah. it again. Patient can yeah. go into VFib because there's no Absolutely. clearance. Yeah. Be yeah. Very, very cautious. If you see this and you see there is a, now you can see some EKG changes also, you know, try not to do the OCT. So first, uh, I'll show you the, this show is the EKG a... there. Left main, so okay. go to this cell. Okay. The healthy uh, left main body, go mm. to this cell. So this is a tightest distal left main. So I see the suck from the 11 o'clock. So the that distal area is like here. The area is like 2.8 by OCD. And it's a correct, so it's a tight uh, distal uh, left main. What uh, about the proximal LED and ostium of the suck? Uh, okay, so, so this is the ostial LED. Mm. And uh, I cannot see the so much calcium because it's all like lipid plug. It's a, yep. not a sharply border. It's just attenuation. It's all lipid good, plug. Good. No, that's what we suspected also that whatever yeah. the calcium we saw in the distal left main was adventitial. Yeah. Very. I see a little bit chunk yeah. of calcium, but it's not severe. Yeah. Yeah. If this this will uh, um, yield to balloon or uh, if even if a worse comes towards cutting balloon. Yeah. Here a little bit calcium. The mid LED. Okay. Less than a quadrant. Uh, yes, yes, like one quadrant calcium. Mm -hmm. So, circ, uh, we just... We, uh, what about the ostial circ? Oh, uh, so it it's a form okay. LED, so now I see like side ones, so, but yeah. we cannot measure the yeah. area. No, I know, but it looks ostium very good. Yeah, yeah. But they always look so. like that. Yeah, like, they always look like that. Yeah. They look good. <laughs> they only... Okay, so with that note, I think we just go back and uh, try to uh, take care of the distal lesion. We should use a cutting balloon. And no, question know, is, should uh, wire into the circ also. Okay. Why do definitely wire the circ. So I uh, agree that uh, the, if we're okay, we try to do a stent across. That was the original plan was. 
a single stand to approach from left main to LED after legion preparation uh, and so. Unless any of our audience have any question or VT, you have some question on this. No, but I think perfectly right. The distal left main turned out to be 2.8, yeah. yeah. highly significant, yeah. though uh, angiographically it looked as if there was adequate lumen. Yeah, and the Sir costume looks to be quite okay. I mean, although we yeah. cannot uh, measure it from uh, this view, if you can show us uh, the bifurcation mode, the Sir costume. Yeah, okay, so sure. So the bifurcation. Good. Sure, I do the bifurcation mode. It's just yes. a visual. Yes. But leave it, leave it there. Fielder wire has been advanced now. This is the bifurcation point. As you can see there. Exactly, just show that bifurcation. You want to comment? Take a moment. Yeah. So, okay. I yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. This is the bifurcation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Generator. You see that there. Yeah. Two like, Yeah, this is a like visual. Yeah. Visual looks often. This is the osteocirc. Yeah. Two five? Two point seven five. Not three oh? No, but vessel is two point yeah. two make three or three. Hold on, okay. hold on. Uh vessel yeah. uh, what are you getting? So actually the start of the pool mark is very small, like uh, No, a distal left main. Distal, right? Okay, sure, sorry. Left main is a. Uh, like here, EEL to EEL is like a long guy's four low. Proximal. Okay. At no, the no, level. I'm saying distal. Distal. Yeah, left I, I want to go with the three o cutter. Just, three, o, yeah. three o cutter, yeah. Yeah, just before the tightest spot is like four low. But what is our proximal LED uh, sure, uh, sure, size sure. wise? Yeah, like so a lot of attenuation. So I try I just to see find that, uh, EEL to EEL. We have wired the circumflex. Uh, uh, we, that's the fielder wire and run through is in the LED. Well, looks like LED is not so big, so... Which is about 3 minus or 3 plus? Yeah, like 3-0, three, 3-0. Three oh, three oh. okay. You don't need OCT. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, okay. what is the landing zone in the LED? Yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's a question. I think we go to the septal <laughs> level, right? Yeah. And, and the OCT. OCT. Yeah. Okay, actually, oh. actually, the start of the pull work also disease, and even before the first dial, it's a so you're saying a disease. long strength, 38, go. Yeah, but Angel looks uh, okay Down. after the dial, but we didn't go distal of the dial. Okay, go up here, so don't go high pressure mm -hmm. here. This is my bit, so yeah. Eight. Okay, good. So, Down. what's the vessel size over there? 2.5? Yeah, uh, yeah. 2.7, The just a start of the poor work. So you want to put what, uh, 275 and then uh, yeah. post dial? I think we can put a 275, 38. Yeah. <laughs> Promise. And then uh, we can, Let's see, floor you want Let's to, to uh, SS, view. you want to now decide how the circ looks? No, I think circ, we put a one stand. If we had to go, we cross over here. Yeah, here. So the, see the epicranial. So I think we had to go into this view now. So we had to go. At, level of the diag. Yeah. 38 may be too At long, the, no? No, no, not 32. No, no, 38, 38. We are not crossing the diag. No, but uh, we had to cross the no. diagonal or no? No. This no, is... on the OCT, it looked as if there was significant plaque just above the diagonal. Uh, what does he have to say? Yeah, right? The diagonal area is, is paired with the C, uh, plaque or no? No, yeah, he... Uh, no, OCT is, OCT is... There is a plaque? Yeah, no. No, it, it looks quite significant in the LED at the yeah. level of bifurcation. Yep. At the level of bifurcation, it's quite uh, significant plaque is there. Yeah, but uh, also this full work is not perfect because at the uh, we did we do the flow is a little slow because of the catheter, so it's uh, not real size looks like. Remember or we can try after the balloon. Multiple crossovers, diagonals. Yeah. This okay, one, I think one. we'll stop it just yeah. before the diagonal. Let's see. Okay. The yeah. Your, is, your, what I meant is that no, should not cover all the branches. Don't cover the diagonal, yeah. circle, everything. Yeah. Let's just let's, at least. Okay. Yeah. Let's take a picture. See it now. You have done the cutting so balloon. Be, so before the diagonal on the OCT, can you come yeah, back? It looks good. With, I think five millimeter above. So 30? then it's 28. About, still no, above that, above that. It also would be too long. 32 then, not 38, 32. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Or you can put a 3 -oh. It's a good size. 3 -oh, 3 -oh 32 promise, right? 3 -oh just before, few millimeter before the diagonal. <laughs> 
और क्वेश्चन इज थर्टी टू वर्सेज ट्वेंटी एट डू यू नो देंथ वाइज लेट्स आई एम सिंग ट्वेंटी by i ball now did you <laughs> i would say the length is proper but the vessel size on the oct he gave us the el diameter am i right yeah, yeah right that it, it's a so the el it. doesn't uh, looks a uh, 3 right yeah. yeah right yeah so maybe quarter size less uh, on by oct criteria angiographic yeah. uh, you may go ahead with 3 but yeah angiography OCT, i mean, let's say yeah you are right if uh, we would not have done let's say one second well, i think this is a very important point we should show the picture now go back to active live flow yeah see this now uh, yeah so this case let's say if i did not do the oct i'll go with the 30 and proximally we do i dilate with a 408 as a pot but 30 and therefore right now we are 3028 right mm. 3028 promus okay okay so let's go now the yeah. only question is that he said 4 mm proximal to the bifurcation in left may so yeah. do you want yeah. to keep the length as the pot length yeah. of at least 6 mm eight. or 6 yeah. or something yeah. we, we have eight now yeah, yeah. we'll have at least eight right there yeah yeah Good. fantastic so that Good that's great some die some die okay <clears throat> that's exactly what we wanted okay go okay we are going up now get a 408 408 mm high pressure balloon So this we are de deploying yeah. at fourteen atmosphere. Yeah, that's too much. Dissect okay, yeah. the second inflation at twelve. Pistol vessel is not three o. So this is Promus. Promus, yeah. So Promus versus Synergy. Uh, Doctor Kini actually likes uh, the Promus better Promus. than uh, uh, Synergy. I mean, I like Synergy better than Promus, but it's always different. You know, good, hmm. beautiful, nice. Okay, so we are going to do a pot proximal, and then you do a final OCT. And sir, uh, uh, actually looking quite good. And remember, in the past, we had lot of data that do the sir decision of the side branch by doing FFR and all that. All the trials have been negative, so there is no region unless patient having subtotal vessel or chest pain or decreased flow. There is no region for us to evaluate. the side branch even if yeah. the significant side branch we know ffr negative and ffr guided side branch pci with the uh, with a dk cross 6 did not show any benefit so clear, mm -hmm. clearly routinely i tell people now question is now before doing this do you want to take the wire out i will before the part i i mean recommendation is that we have to remove the wire out but uh, nothing wrong i'll leave it there okay Yeah. Okay. The other yeah. thing is there's a new um, going up. Yes, go up. Review article that has just come out where they are talking about physiology of the side branch uh, bifurcation mm. with FFR. Okay, you want to go two millimeter further? Yeah, there are actually two papers saying that you uh, review evaluate, yeah. one in the Jack intervention, other one in Jack, and I still have to go through those uh, making the go key up, points yeah. from those trials. I mean those publications, which will include in the future. Uh, good down you want austral little bit so now we went up to 18 atmosphere proxima good. optimization you don't need 10. to go yeah, 10, yeah. 10. good 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 enough yeah. okay down just 10 not even 10 8 good okay so ready so you said that uh, you make a choice between promus and synergy do you make a choice whether you are doing left main non left main lesion or is just preference yeah i think it's just a preference we know the biggest data for the left main is with the xl trial with the zines so now there are other data also for synergy and so but all these have been you know there is no truly trial of the promus in the left main so this case i would say uh, what we have the da the data uh, basically will be of the uh, of the zines but uh, synergy versus what there is a, some concern with the synergy in a calcific lesion maybe not given enough there are some data of the early thrombosis and so but but overall we have published our own data 
uh, with these, then we did not find any difference. So that's where we so are now. So the circ looks okay. I'm going to remove the wire and we do the final OCT. If, uh, that's but okay. here there is a dent in the distal left main, which is okay, Flora. Yeah, I think that's yeah. just a curve, the sure. way the vessel is. Okay. You will see that it is... Um, yeah. If it's not, if it didn't get our lumen of more than 8.5, we can go back with the high pressure with the 4.0. We, we, we went only 16, 18, we can go 24. No, I says. Okay. Get the OCT again. So this time what I did earlier, uh, wire was all the way down. And uh, there was this, um, you know, concertina effect of the uh, torches LED and there was no flow distally. So you see that I pulled the wire back. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. I don't yeah. Keep, possibly the floppy portion is there. So yeah. that's actually not causing any ischemia there. Yeah, all vessels are very tortuous in this patient. Yeah. Okay, let's bring back the OCD right. on the main. Yeah. What about longitudinal deformity? Do you find any difference between Promus, Synergy, Giants? Yeah, I think the Giants is solid in that point of view. Uh, it's still rare right. cases. Once they are very proximal, we may see a little uh, longitudinal uh, stand deformity. And that probably will be more with a Promus Synergy, actually, particularly now. The Synergy, we have Megatron. Megatron has an added oh, connector. Nature. And that, uh, uh, so very rarely the, that part happened now. Uh, but I think this is good advantage with the newer stents. Looks the longitudinal, longitudinal stent deformity, which used to be a troublesome in the past with associated complications, happens yeah, very little clearance. nowadays. Yeah, It's ready. Okay, we are doing it now. Post. Yes, great image. Yeah. So I'm checking. Oh. I saw some dissection, distal edge. Huh? Yeah, the yeah, distal so, edge, there is some dissection. Yeah, proximal edge looks perfect. And uh, stent is expanded. And go to the distal edge. It can be a balloon or you have to put a short stent probably? So, you want to go to a uh, so this is a, just a distal edge. And I go to the little bit distal. More so, than two millimeter and... Yeah, uh, and uh, angle. Yeah, and no, no, like still, still, media, I media think dissections, so. bad dissection. Yeah. yeah, and at two quadrants, go to epicranial. Yeah, and more than one. Let's see, we see it in other view, although we're seeing it in the caudal view. We saw it. Uh, go to the floro now, but no, let's analyze the OCT. What else we need to do besides the dissection? Nothing else. No, proximal but, looks good, and uh, give perfect. Us a, yeah, well, give us a CSA of the distal left main so we know we don't sure, have sure. to yeah. post that. Yeah. So now I see the circ from the yes. 10 o'clock. Before the uh, circ is like uh, 6.7. Oh. Uh, no. So by criteria, I think we have to post dilate that. 6.7 at the distal yes. left main. It's not good. Yeah. We yeah. need to get to 8 plus. Yeah, right. The plot now is also, of course, like 9, but yeah. uh, this still. Uh, Left main is like we still. saw it, uh, joint, uh, you know, a little dent on that side. But I think we go three five. No, 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 no four balloon, balloon. We can go. We have same, but just had to go a little higher pressure. Yeah. Oh, you're then extending into the lady, which is a smaller vessel. Three five. Now, let's see the austral LED uh, dimensions. So yeah, this is yeah. just the uh, uh, austral LED. Yeah. Even five point eight, even yeah, that yeah. is low. That is, that is that is was small to begin with. No, no, but you need a 6.5 yeah. at least. Yeah, it looks like Austell LED year to year. It looks like more than 3.5. Yeah. And our left main side is full low. But the blue main is like elliptical shape. And the area is like 6 point something. Okay. And let's if you come to the proximal picture. edge, proximal edge of the left main. Yeah, let's go to proximal edge. Yeah. Proximal edge is great. No malla position and yeah, another section like this. No, and and the the, the area area is like nine ten. Point. nine points. So proximal is all good. It's a distal good. bifurcation level, and uh, here and the austral LED. 
and the distal edge. If you go to the distal edge, let's see that, that again. Yeah. yeah. Because not only there is dissection, but the lumen area is also small. Yeah. If you see the plaque burden and the lumen area. And if you now go to the distal landing zone after the dissection, mm -hmm. that, that's this point. Yeah. Yeah. How much is it? So, I, I so think EL to EL is like 2.8. So, maybe we can put 2.75. It's after the yeah, 12 millimeter from the distal edge. No, no, no. You have to put 16 now. Huh? Okay, 16. Right, uh, so I think we should cover it. Go to this new uh, picture we have taken. Yeah, play. Yep. Minus. So angiographic, could you see in any view the yeah. dissection? Yes, we saw that. Okay. Let me show you, yeah. This is the three, yeah. A little haziness, and see, no, yeah. no minus, yeah, no. Go to yeah, the this next. Is a, this is the one, yeah. yeah, this is the one now. Yeah, it's a little yeah. haziness, this is now, yeah. but let me just show you even before. We saw it in other view. See that at? Where you start, what's the vessel right size? Right? See that? The start of the vessel is 2.75, mm. 2.8. Yeah. yeah, see that uh, at exactly 12 o'clock position. Yeah, you see a yeah, little bit of yeah. dissection and there's a narrowing of the lumen. So eccentric. And how do you know in other view that you we have very translucency there? Right there. 12 should be okay, right? Or key -key? Yeah, yeah. 12 is like just side by side. Okay. Good. So uh, will that go above the diagonal then? No, yeah, right? No, now, now we, we will uh, we'll be covering the diagonal. Yeah, right? we have to. What we didn't want yeah. to do. So that's what I'm saying. So this time we'll have to cover the diagonal. So yes. So we don't have that length 16 millimeter here, but 12. on the angiogram, the will cover, yeah. Uh, by, yeah, by angiogram we probably will go with the 12 because we don't go further yeah. down. There's another uh, branch and mild disease. We leave that alone, but 12 should cover our area of the dissection. And as yeah. the whole question was that, you know, there is always a little disease in that area. So even I went not very high pressure with the 3.0, we went only 14. It as dissection and part of that probably was our stent ended in the disease segment. No, no, not that. that's not the I uh, think also it, uh, it was 2.7 the vessel size there. Right. We went with the 3 or 3 or at 14 was too big for that area. Yeah, yeah, if because of the semi compliant, yeah, yeah, yeah. compliant balloon of the stent. Yes. Mm. That's the reason. Yeah, good. Pull back two millimeter. Okay, going up? Yeah. Not pull back or you're okay? No, we're good. Okay. <clears throat> 14 now and okay, then... down. One second. We pull back a little bit and then we can go to high pressure. So I think. Get back the 4 balloon again for the display. Yeah, yeah good. So in the stented segment, uh, can you show that MSA, which I can see here on the longitudinal, if you go back, no, no, not so far, but distal, distal, the MSA at the narrowest portion, I think there, yeah, 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 somewhere, no, still proximal. You mean the intrastent? Yeah, the intrastent, I'm saying intrastent, the MSA at this no, level, still proximal, okay. still proximal. Three five high pressure because between twenty and thirty, there is yeah yeah that spot. How much is it? Like four point six. Three point five twelve. But uh, I can collect. I mean, it's more than five. Like five point one. Yeah. So so that segment, don't you think it is under expanded as compared to the distal uh, area? Distal MS. Is okay, because uh, more than five. The problem is that this all left me. You go about to uh, model view. Okay.
Yeah, and then in the meantime, you can show us the bifurcation mode of the sarcostium and let's okay. see how many how many struts or links are there in front of that ostium. Okay, so yeah. we're going up now. How much? 24? No, 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 no. Please. 20. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. We're not getting crazy here. Okay. Old lady. Want to go two millimeters further or we are good? No, no, no. Like this? Not. Yeah. Still, if you can rotate and now a bit. Yeah, this is the circ. The yeah. strut is on the side launch. Yes. Good. I don't think we should right. rotate again. No. We'll don't find don't. again. No, something else. Yeah, what do you think there? Good. I mean, little stent struts, which is fine. Yeah. And the flow is good in the circ. Yep, it's still good. Yeah. No EKG changes? Nothing. Yeah, show the ECG Nothing. also. They'll show the hemodynamics also. Very good. Yeah. So now, shall we take a LO caudal view or we go with yeah. OCT now? I think we do LO caudal and uh, call it a day. Yeah. Right. One second, we are going to the caudal view. Okay. Good. Yep. Good. Okay. Circle looks the same. <laughs> Always yeah. look that way, yeah. So I don't think we need to do another OCT. I think we have done enough uh, multiple runs. We understood the area, uh, area yeah. which we have optimized now, further with. And uh, so I think that's uh, taken all this together. And then we say one picture, you always do a low mag without moving the camera. Just to make sure there is no injury to the wire, and so we are given the nitro already. Yeah. Good blood flow, no ECG changes, yeah. and our plan was to do a stent crossover. In this particular case, based on the baseline angiogram that was confirmed by the OCT, and we keep it the same way. So I think from a procedural point of view, we are done, uh, and uh, we. You have any some questions on yeah. the chat. Yeah, yeah, any any questions on the chat? The so total uh, since we did three yeah three runs of OCT, right? Yeah, we have like 140 cc die with the uh, air karma very little, 0 0.4. Fluoro time right. 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in a left main uh, double bifurcation, I would say now. Yeah. Left main circ and LED diagonal. So I think we learned a lot from this, especially by doing the OCT, two things, the di distant dissection and the under expansion at the left main bifurcation to see that we adequate achieve the area which have been nowadays almost become a standard after the Noble and the Excel trials to derive. And uh, to remember that the OCT and the IOS dimensions are a bit different. Now, clearly, OCT is always like 0.5 uh, or 1. I'm, I mean, truly, if you think about, while we have the clear-cut criteria of the IVAS, the OCT dimensions are not that clear. And we know that all some trials have shown that this almost 1 millimeter is smaller than the IVAS. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. So here, although, I mean, we looked at that and we expanded it, but we should add one more. So the proximal was almost 10. So it's like 11 or 11.5, as they say, uh, what they should achieve. Plus, we saw distant dissection, which we saw on the angio also, and we confirmed here, and we did that without compromising. So I think all in all, uh, simple provisional technique, crossover, uh, going with uh, imaging, and excellent result with uh, minimum dye. That, that is absolutely <laughs> correct. And, and the, uh, one question always comes. Now, should we do a kissing balloon uh, in this particular case? Uh, 
uh, that your flow is across uh, in the side branch remain good. But should you do a kissing balloon dilatation now, and this actually is the big uh, issues because some of the old trials have shown like modified with a definition two and uh, where they use a two stent approach versus one stent approach and particularly in the one, the kissing balloon, everybody agrees. You have two, two stent, you do a kissing balloon, clear. But if you have one stent approach, you should you do a kissing balloon. There are some data to show that doing a kissing balloon decrease the subsequent TLR. But then there are a few other data showed not uh, that convincing. And we go back to slide and we actually presented a, a paper of the Excel trial uh, with subsequent follow-up from there uh, is, uh, and we'll come back and uh, Dr. Keeney will talk about uh, the apps. And this was basically the final kissing balloon inflation on long-term outcome after PCR distal left main. And basically goal was to see your one stent versus two stent. You see there, your ki kissing balloon inflation versus no kissing balloon. Now, the patients who have occlusion of the side branch or less than Timmy one flow and chest pain and decreased flow are excluded. So if you did not have it, you do a kissing balloon dilatation. Uh, as you can see there on the left side, that definitely there is no benefit in terms of the mace. So this is the primary and secondary endpoint. Now, definitely once you have on the kissing balloon, uh, final kissing balloon for the two stand, there was trend towards a better outcome. Now, more important is this part. The once you have a kissing balloon, inflation at four years, look at the stand thrombosis. Uh, definite probable was 0.9 if you did no KBI and it was 3.1 if you did KBI. P-value of 0.1. So clearly, if you have definite stent thrombosis of 0.4 and 3.1. So two key is that it definitely have better outcome uh, in this particular group of patient. Now, although in this case, when you did a KBI uh, in the two stent also, there was some difference in stent thrombosis numerically, but not significant. We're a little surprised on that point. But more important is on the left side, once you have one stent inflation uh, is implanted, that kissing balloon inflation had tended to be no effect on the primary endpoint of the TVF, but definitely high tend, trend towards higher definite or definite to probable stent thrombosis. Anu, you want to comment on it? No, I think it's uh, how, like here, you saw that uh, based on the definition uh, of uh, side branch, which was the circumflex, we know uh, we went, uh, took various views. The, um, there was no compromise in, uh, you know, the person diameter stenosis after stenting. So that's one. Timmy flow, you know, EKG changes, no chest pain. I think we use that definition uh, everywhere. If we see a little more compromise, which for left main, we are saying 50% and more. Here we started 30, 50, suppose it was 50, 60 or so. And we were, then they felt that you want to go and do a kissing balloon probably is acceptable. But I think the biggest reason why we see here, though, the, I mean, Excel trial also, I know it's a recent trial, but still older. But nowadays, I think uh, PCI of left main, have, uh, you know, everybody does it with imaging and uh, looking at uh, how the stents uh, start look. So uh, if it's not indicated, means routine kissing balloon, the reason for stent thrombosis is probably because uh, the percent uh, of imaging, uh, probably five to 10% in Excel, uh, IVAS was done, that you will probably destroy the uh, stent uh, st uh, structure architecture giving rise to stent thrombosis. That's probably the reason. So I'm a biggest believer that if the side branch looks okay, hemi flow is good, no chest pain, no EKG changes, uh, and uh, you know post stenting, the diameter stenosis is no change. Do not touch the architecture of the main vessel stenting. And this actually resonates with the Nordic bifurcation trial. Also, you know Nordic bifurcation three also showed. Kissing balloon, no kissing balloon. That was non-left main, no no benefit, except more contrast use and more, higher chances of side branch stenting. So clearly, it turns it turning out to be that final kissing balloon inflation was a fashion. I would say maybe eight ten years ago, then kind of become questionable. But I think it's enough data now that KBI is not needed unless routine. you have to go to routine KBI is not needed uh, at present in the single stent approach. With the two stent approach, yes, but not in the single stent approach. Uh, what is yeah, your uh, <laughs> take on video no, on this? Uh, no, right. So <clears throat> at least as on today, we don't have any data 
that FK by uh, final kissing in a single stand crossover technique is useful. There is some controversy. Some people say that maybe, maybe just side branch uh, dilatation across to just get over the struts could be one hypothesis. But still, there is no studies even on that versus uh, kissing balloon. So I think overall it is questionable. So as on today, we keep it simple. If the angiographic criteria is meet it, then only you try and do it. Otherwise, leave it alone. And as you said, Nordic showed that uh, it ended up in more uh, uh, numbers of uh, side branch stenting, bailout stenting being done. Absolutely. The, and, uh, and, and routine FFR guidance for the side branch also has go, gone out of favor uh, because there's no convincing data. And we also data are that even you felt it's 80% lesion, your FFR will be more than 0.8. Somehow it's just a, it, a mark effect at the bifurcation level. Yeah, that's because of the coronal shift, but not coronal because shift, of, yeah. yeah, only because of the coronal shift. So I think overall the, uh, that was... So left main, as on today, we are making it more simple day by day and establishing the criteria. Pot, of course, is useful. No yes. doubt about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Pot is okay. useful. So pot is a must, whatever you do. So I think uh, that and the other feature is, as you saw in this case, the compliance of the stent should of the stent architecture should be well understood so that it matches the left main uh, dimensions and the distal landing zone dimension. Absolutely, yep, very important point. So now with the continuation, so with the, Dr. Keeney has to uh, show the latest in the app technology. And uh, while we are showing that, uh, go to the slides and uh, I'll go back and uh, get ready for our case. Uh, uh, presentation, but uh, go to the slides now. Yeah. So, so any other question from uh, uh, our uh, audience? Uh, they're showing it. They have to put a new one now, right? Yeah. So you have to come off so they yeah. can put it. Hmm. Anything on the chat board? Any questions regarding the case, technique, wires, no selection? <laughs> At least. Sure uh, I don't see any question on the chat box. If the Sun people have anything on their chat box, maybe they can question, uh, read the question out. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, excellent. So uh, one question, uh, if at all, I mean, we can discuss that out also, radial versus femoral. What do you have to say for left main interventions? I can tell you that a lot of people will do radial here. So we, the complex uh, left main, we definitely will try to go with the groin, uh, particularly may, the, may, some of the left main with the LV dysfunction, you're doing impella. So one uh, vascular access of the CP, you can go put your seven French catheter through it. But uh, majority, I would say out of United States, 90% these cases will be done by radial. In United States, probably 30% will be done by radial, 70% femoral. And now actually radial, by every means have come as a class one indication, not only in acute coronary syndrome, even in stable CAD uh, with the latest guidelines. So the key is acute coronary syndrome for survival advantage. In stable CAD, the bleeding and vascular advantage, not the mortality advantage of vascular bleeding. And that's what has been shown. And it's actually the right thing to do uh, for patients. Now, in this patient, we didn't do it because of hemiparesis. So the patient has a CVA. But this is kind of case which, in our opinion, is not that complex and can be done safely with the radio. Yeah. And the other question I had is about IBP versus impella. In left main interventions, what are your numbers as far as IBP versus impella is considered? Recently, yeah, so I, I mean, yeah, yeah. very good point. Yeah. So, no, the, so let's say every month uh, mm -hmm. with our 350 coronary intervention, uh, these two devices. Uh, we use about 15 mm. impella and about five balloon no, pump. So 20. Device, so right. 20 basically is about like four or five percent of cases uh, will use uh, these devices, and those are really left uh, patient with a low EF and complex CAD. Rare case of the complex left main, even with the EF is normal. 
let's say particularly if the right corner is closed but ef is 60 percent we know this patient can get into trouble so in that particular patient uh, we will use the impella so and here is balloon pump versus impella i can tell you because of the insurance and reimbursement uh, there is a good reimbursement in appropriate cases using impella in america so impella numbers are going up now we actually have data from protect 3 that old complications vascular every other complication used to be with the pro we saw with impella in protect 2 have become one third now because the meticulous vascular technique and that actually also part of very important in the product four trial um, the head of the our technical committee that very much emphasis on the vascular access and vascular access is the key so clearly that um, if possible we'll go with impella as a primary approach but we'll use a balloon pump into some of those cases 25 30 percent where there is the issue with the vascular size and patient has some aortic issues and those are the two group of patients uh, we will go with the balloon pump uh, in patient with the LV dysfunction. Now, somebody with a questionable uh, distal left main bifurcation, good ejection fraction, but you think complex, but not very complex, I think the impella will be overkill on that case. And But we'll, we'll go just with the balloon pump. So key is that what we need to learn that as an interventionist when we are doing it, uh, once what is the outcome of the patient? Patient has to come out of the cath lab alive and nothing. So therefore, whatever requires uh, in the, doing these cases, we have to be upfront with the family because family then blame the cardiologist that they didn't, we didn't tell uh, and it was a complex case, added devices used um, after the procedure started. So all those things have to disappear. So we have to be very clear on that. Yeah. So now Anu, yeah. you're ready with the slides? Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah, this are the uh, slides, uh, sorry, of the apps that we okay. have. I wanted to go over. One is, I think, Bifurcate that uh, uh, was the first uh, version that uh, came out in 2017. That's the uh, animation of the bifurcation, uh, all the techniques that we talk for left main, non-left main. Then, uh, you know, for the imaging part, we did a uh, OCT, which is called as Octade. Um, again, you see that there are uh, several cases as well as quiz um, and teaching point how to do OCT and how to understand each kind of uh, lesion morphology. Now, so much for uh, the other one was uh, Tower Cathode, if you see there. Um, this is for uh, access, reaccess after doing Tower. Now, have since Tower is being done even in low risk patients who are 60, 65, and currently even three to five percent of the patients we see are coming back because of uh, some kind of uh, symptomatology you need to understand how to reaccess coronary through the various valves that we are doing so we have animations included in this app and there's a website also so all these apps uh, except for the initial bifurcate uh, that and the transcepted we have what is called as a website the reason is many people may not want to or you are, are in the base or in the area where you don't have a, a Wi-Fi, but these apps are to the next generation that even without Wi-Fi, you are able to access and see what, what goes on. But um, if you are in the lab and you want, everybody wants to know what to do quickly, you can just go onto the website, which is cardiologyapps.com and then see, uh, check all this out. Now, uh, transeptate was just to say various uh, uh, transeptal technique for the various uh, mitral procedures that are coming out now. And calcificate, which we are now going to the second version uh, uh, this year uh, since uh, IVL was added. We essentially discussed, uh, you know, what is what kind of uh, device, which is a rotational atherectomy, orbital atherectomy, laser, and when to use, and all the steps of rotational atherectomy, orbital atherectomy. Uh, how to do these procedures have been uh, included in this. Now, Complicate actually is just a web app. It's not an app you cannot download because there are uh, uh, over 50 cases, about 800 angiogram of the complications that we see in the cath lab and all the complications have been covered here. So it's like we showed each case and went over each case how to avoid the complication. Bifurcate 3D is a 3D animation. The bifurcate was just anime. This is a the animation now, the other one was illustration. Bifurcate was illustration. Bifurcate 3D is an animation of exactly how to do bifurcation stenting. 
STEMI app is what we are using here. Uh, is uh, what I would say is a communication app between the STEMI teams so that the patient can be transported quickly from the ED to the lab, from uh, outside hospital to our hospital. So that, uh, that has been also in the process. And I just want to show the last app that we was a guide wire which came out in uh, November of last year. If you see here, we de uh, described CTO and non-CTO wires. So if you just show you what CTO wires uh, will look like. When you press, you see that all the wires, there are about 130 coronary wires and each wire that there are case series that we uh, show which wire to be used in which different cases, uh, the discussion of the cases and uh, you have a nice search function. If you, have, you want a wire, you put that on the search function, you can immediately see the wire and then you go press on that. It will show you the properties of each wire like this. Like if you see here, what the properties of the wire, who makes it, what's the core material, tapering, and uh, just a brief description of uh, each of these wires. So as an interventional cardiologist, I think we need to have some idea of the devices and the wires that we use. So if you see here, um, the wires that we use is nicely described as well as so we have what's called as the micro catheters, which is also part uh, here in this uh, guide wire app. Then this one, which is a web app and the app should be coming out uh, this month is devices. So interventional cardiologists, interventional fellow, nurses, technicians uh, have to have a, nine, a good idea about the various devices that are available in the cath lab. So we just uh, showed you all the devices that are available like this. So you go from start. So you start from the access, the sheet, the diagnostic wire, the guide wi wires, the diagnostic catheters, micro catheters, wires, stenters, imaging. And then uh, we have called what is called as in a miscellaneous where a lot of things that is not covered is uh, nicely covered here. All the devices that is available. So this is the website of the same thing. If you don't want to download, you can go check this, uh, you know, you uh, press what you want to learn and uh, everything will, uh, you'll have it in a drop down menu, what you want to learn. This is just a bird's eye view of the devices that we have covered uh, in this uh, web app as well as the app. This is uh, the way it look in the website. So excellent. Thanks, madam, for showing us all this. And I'm sure, uh, it's a wonderful emergency app, actually. Anytime anybody wants to have some details about some devices, that includes a guide extension catheter, twin twin uh, pass, uh, I mean, Everything. double lumen catheters. Right. Yeah. All, the, yeah. all the balloons, the stands. Uh, Everything and this we have used global, not just uh, global means essentially United States. I mean, Northern United States, uh, Europe, uh, and you know, Southeast Asia. Uh, right. oh, 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 yes, so people can go in and look at it. So I think Dr. Right. Sharma is ready upstairs, and uh, you can start your lecture there. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So we are right dot on time. Uh, it's eight and we are supposed to start your lecture at eight. <laughs> yeah, so let's see. All right. So I think uh, from Cat Lab can come out and really great case. A lot of illustration po uh, point, teaching points. And uh, uh, thanks to uh, Anu and the rest of the team. Or Cat Lab actually, many people for the live relay, they actually even, it's not their working day, they come. Uh, our yeah. staff is so dedicated. No, that's the, uh, the reason is the teaching points which you get to see live. Even today we saw, you know, those two things under expansion, left main uh, distally and the distal dissection. So every time you see the case, you learn something more and more. So I think thanks to the whole team uh, for... Yeah, uh, 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 Will, uh, Will is our, uh, you know, persistent, uh, what I would say, the uh, uh, live case... Uh, nurse and now Elena is joining the club. She was off today, but she uh, made sure she'll come and do the live case with us. And yeah, Pablo, yeah. Pablo yeah. is the same. Even if he's on vacation, he usually goes to yeah. Mexico. But when I say Pablo, we have a live case, he'll come back. Yeah. <laughs> so the same team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are live case specialists. 